Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily, the first English news program in Poland. I'm your host, Benjamin Lee. Leader of the Law and Justice Party, Jarosław Kaczynski, announced the names of 41 leaders of electoral lists of the United Right in individual districts. Kaczynski himself will be running in the elections in Warsaw, Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki in Katowice. This time, many young politicians will be featured. Leader of the Law and Justice Party, Jarosław Kaczyński, has presented candidates topping the lists in 41 constituencies for the parliamentary elections scheduled in Poland this fall. Among the candidates are PM Mateusz Morawiecki in Katowice, Deputy PM Jacek Sasin in Helm, Culture Minister Piotr Gliński in Łódź, Speaker Marek Kuchciński in Krosno, and Jarosław Kaczyński himself running in Warsaw. The Law and Justice Party's full platform for the fall will be presented at the end of August before the convention inaugurating the launch of the campaign. The leader of the Polish People's Party, Władysław Kosiniak Kamysz, announced yesterday that his party won't be forming a coalition with the civic platform, but instead build its own central Christian democratic one. Politicians of the civic platform didn't hide their disappointment, while many political commentators believe it's the right move for the liberal populist party, which is desperately trying to preserve its identity. Following the Friday announcement by Władysław Kosiniak Kamesz, it appears the opposition will form two separate blocks for the parliamentary elections in autumn. We promise to make a final decision and that we will be talking about two blocks because that's our offer to create two blocks which could have a chance of defeating the Law and Justice Party. We want to form a central block, the Polish coalition, which can give us the opportunity of having clear views. Some of the politicians of the civic platform don't want to comment on the populist choice, arguing that the final decisions will be made on Wednesday. Everyone makes their own decisions. The civic coalition presented a concrete program and an idea of how to at least have a shot at winning. Of course, we invite everyone from the left, and I would be thankful to my friends in the Polish People's Party if they reconsider their decision. The Polish People's Party may in the end form a partnership with the Kukis 15 movement, but it's not their only possible choice. I think it could make things clear for the Polish political scene and bring back the right formula of democracy. Democracy which is based on political parties of distinctive identity and programs, so the decision can make things as they should be for the Polish political system. According to the latest opinion polls, the Polish People's Party balances on the electoral threshold. During the Civic Coalition's convention, its leader, Grzegorz Schetyna, presented six areas in which the Civic Platform Party and other members of the coalition would like to focus on in the elections. The parties want to emphasize, amongst others, on the fight for the rights for homosexual couples. First of all, freedom and democracy. Poles law freedom, regardless of their financial situation and education. That's why we're going to start with the rebuilding of democracy. We're introducing a one of set of acts. We're going to get rid of all the lawlessness. Women rights have to become obvious. We're going to introduce the homosexual partnerships as well. Another thing, higher salaries. I guarantee that all the people who earn four and a half thousand zlotys or less will get bonuses for their work. Another thing that I should have begun my speech with is health. The fight against cancer program in Poland will meet the European standards. We have a white program for seniors. The 13th pension program should be introduced permanently. Another thing, education. Teachers will get the promised raises. The last thing, clean water and fresh air. We're going to reduce air and water pollution. We have to clean the entire Poland. The new president of Slovakia, Zuzana Kapotova, called on the Visegrad group of Eastern EU member states this Thursday to protect the rule of law in order not to be seen as weakening the European Union. This signals a possible rift within the bloc that has historically acted in unison. After a meeting with the Hungarian president Janos Ader, Zuzana Czaputowa, the Slovakian president, said that cooperation in the Visegrad group comprising Poland, Hungary, Slovakia and the Czech Republic should be based on common values. Without specifying targeted countries, Chaputova, who took office last month, took aim at Hungary and Poland, the two eastern member states that often saw conflict with the EU over rule of law concerns. She told the news conference that the four countries' cooperation should be based on values including rule of law, democracy and freedom. The statement was likely made in light of Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban and Poland's ruling Law and Justice Party being accused to have tightened controls on courts and judges, media and academics, as well as NGOs. 
Chaputova also dismissed allegations by some Hungarian media outlet that she was an agent working for Hungarian-born, US-based billionaire George Soros as lies. That's it for today. See you next time on Poland Daily. But stay tuned for the Poland Daily Weather Report, followed by the Poland Daily Business section. I'm Aleksandra Zarzycka and welcome to Poland Daily Weather. Let's take a look at the forecast for tonight. Cloudy skies across the country, but the temperature will be a little higher than they have been in recent weeks. A maximum 14 degrees in Koszalin and Szczecin and 10 degrees in Białystok and Olsztyn. Pressure will fall. And now over to tomorrow. An overcast day, especially on the south and around Lublin, while northern Poland will be quite sunny. Rainfalls are expected on the south. The temperature will range from 20 to 24 degrees. Let's see what we can expect from the following three days. On Monday, rainfall will appear on the southeast. Pressure will be little rise. More rainfalls are expected on Tuesday, with temperatures ranging between 18 to 23 degrees. On Wednesday, a fairly warm day across the Poland, uh, with temperatures ranging between 16 and 24 degrees. Little rainfall is expected over Easter Poland. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Poland Daily Business Edition. Tonight we will talk about uh, un, uh, unmanned flying objects, UFOs, obviously, and um, the UFOs in Polish government is a subject uh, that uh, Mrs. Małgorzata Darowska takes care of. Welcome to the show. Welcome. Uh, Mrs. Małgorzata Darowska, Minister of Infrastructure. So <clears throat> we will have in Poland a uh, proving ground for drones uh, or aerial drones and uh, we'll check out how it works with various services that are using this um, kind of transportation, this kind of uh, delivery, uh, where this test bed will be located. Uh, <clears throat> we decided to establish a testing field in Upper Silesia region. Uh, this is because uh, the Upper Silesia, Silesia region is uh, very fitted to, to this uh, specific, specific purpose. Most of our viewers know this is former or powerhouse of Polish economy, industrial location, very heavy, uh, connected with the rest of Europe. Uh, lots of people are living there, basically. More than two million people, actually, right. yes. So, uh, also the, the mining area is, uh, is very promising in terms of uh, preparing the, the testing fields, fields for very early stage uh, tests for drones. Uh, actually, in uh, near Katowice, we are uh, seeking uh, uh, the place, or we are preparing the place, which will be designated to test drones, which will be further introduced into the city. So this is the purpose of our operations in Katowice, in Upper mm -hmm. Silesia region. Mm -hmm. Because introducing drones into the city is, uh, is, is, is responsibility. Right. It's kind of OK if they are flying over the fields. Absolutely. Because if they crash, they can destroy a bit of tree or something like that. But if they are in the city where uh, there is a confusing amount of buildings, uh, electromagnetic interference, and all kinds of problems, this, this becomes really difficult. Exactly. And also the public acceptance of, the, uh, of drones in the city over our heads, it's also uh, a crucial point of our, let's say, activities. This is why we do work with uh, local government, which, are, which is working on Let's say preparate, which is preparing the the citizens uh, to understand the uh, the drone uh, the drone technologies uh, the uh, the benefits of the drone technology that may introduce these 
innovation to this into the city. So uh, yes, totally. We absolutely we, we, we are pretty sure that uh, we should. We, we, we this is why we work differently with the cities and we do work differently with the areas which are let's say industry industrial areas. Mm -hmm. So what are the benefits of drones flying overhead in cities? Well, there is plenty of benefits, starting from environmental uh, benefits like uh, cleaner, uh, uh, because uh, the, uh, the drones will bring also a new kind of uh, of, uh, of uh, engines, uh, which will be cleaner, which will save uh, time to get from time to from from one point to another point. Also, the uh, the the, um, the drones can be used to, to bring uh, to to carry uh, packages from one point to another, like between the hospitals, uh, bringing blood, which is let's say the flagship uh, service uh, when we are talking about the drones. But also for uh, for, for small packages, uh, small packages which uh, Polish Post. Uh, is looking on, uh, and uh, we are trying to uh, to bring Polish po Polish Post to to es estimate. Uh, this the is a formal cooperation between the ministry and Polish Post. Yes, actually, uh, there there, are, there is a first, let's say, uh, round of consultation. So, uh, of course, we cannot we cannot uh, impose any uh, any any moves in, into this dire direction. But we, are, but we are trying to compare what's going on abroad and what uh, what is going inside in Poland, and. Uh, as I am saying, uh, we cannot we, we cannot sleep because uh, in one year we will be uh, we we will have to in, to to accept uh, uh, companies uh, from 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 abroad which will uh, which will want to use drones for deliveries, and if our companies will sleep, they yep. will lose the market. Right, right, right. And uh, this is definitely uh, the Polish Post is trying to picture themselves as a modern, uh, ultra modern organization right now. They have brand new offices all over the country. So the drones is like logical um, addition to all that. What are the other uh, uses of uh, drones in the city. For example, one of the Polish uh, problems is that uh, people in uh, rural or remote communities are using not necessarily clean fuel to heat themselves up in winter. Yes, actually, uh, uh, inspections of, uh, of, of the air was our first uh, activity. Uh, right now, we are ready to publish uh, in a few weeks uh, to, to publish uh, our let's say recommendation how to how to evaluate how to uh, make let's say inspection of uh, of, uh, of households, which are let's say um, which probably are using the fuel which is not uh, accepted, which is which is illegal. But uh, it's, it's, it may be it may be seen as something wrong, but I would put it in another in another way because in Katowice the uh, uh, the, 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 the lo local uh, local uh, police uh, is very well prepared to work together with uh, with the citizens and actually to use the information about uh, about the, 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 the some let's say abuses, not to um, impose fines, but to work together in order to uh, help them to apply for some help. Yeah. Uh, at least when the people will be aware that someone knows what you are actually burning in your own stove, um, they make them think twice about yes. putting dirty objects to it, right? Yes, and actually people are looking for new technologies to help them to not to fight with the neighbors, but to help them to make the community more cleaner and more cooperative. Let's stay with that positive image. Thank you very much. Uh, Małgorzata Darowska of Ministry of uh, Infrastructure was our guest tonight and we know a little bit more about mm. Katowice and uh, the drone testbed that's soon to be in that southern mm. Polish city. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was it for tonight's Poland Daily Business.
I'm Alexandra Zarzycka and welcome back to Poland Daily Weather. Let's look at the forecast for tomorrow. An overcast day, especially on the south and around Lublin, while northern Poland will be quite sunny. Rainfalls are expected on the south. The temperature will range from 20 to 24 degrees. Now let's see forecast for Europe. On the Iberian Peninsula, temperature will range from 24 in Lisbon to 32 degrees in Madrid. Temperature will rise in Scandinavia and there we will see 23 in Oslo, 20 in Stockholm and 17 in Helsinki. Plenty of sunlight in British islands. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Welcome to Poland Daily Culture. I'm Paulina Adrastein. And I'm John Carter. And today we're at Immersion, a company based in Warsaw, Poland. And we're going to show you all about the Polish role in the fascinating world of augmented reality and virtual reality. So come and join us. In today's episode of Poland Daily Culture, I'm joined uh, by Bartosz Rosłoński, who is the Vice President of Immersion, and he will take us through the more practical part. So, hello, and what can we see on the screen? So, this is the project that we developed for American Museum uh, of Natural History. Uh, it is a permanent installation in uh, New York, in museum. Uh, which will be available for visitors until 2020. Uh, we developed it uh, with the partnership of HTC Vive, which is a producer of one of the most sophisticated uh, virtual reality equipment. Uh, we also partnered with Mark Norell, who is uh, one of the best and well-known paleontologists in the world. So this was a you know, huge thing for us. So thanks to uh, HTC Vive and its, uh, in, in, in this technology, you will be able to assemble T-Rex uh, in virtual reality. Thanks to controllers, you can see your hands in the virtual world and you can interact with objects. So what we create is a, is a game where a user can find himself in a virtual world created by us and he can he can interact uh, with different kind of objects. And how is it different from like 3D movies that we used to see in our childhood? Yeah, so 3D movies are just a flat screen and, uh, you know, thanks to, thanks to uh, goggles, you can only feel like it's a 3D. And in this case, you enter to another world. So it's, uh, it's a completely different experience, which is pretty hard to explain. You need to try it to completely understand it. Because it's like you're, you're immersed in another world. And so everybody visiting the museum in New York can uh, use this VR? Yeah, uh, actually, I, I, we visited them for the premiere. It, there was like 200 journalists, so the line was huge. And uh, as far as we know, the, the lines are endless there. So you need to just buy a ticket for this. Like it's, it's, uh, it's like free, but you need to get a ticket and you go for the actual time that is, you know, uh, that is on the ticket so that it's easier. And where and when was this, this program created? So we developed it for around six months, but uh, the major part of our work was just the concept because uh, it was it was really a huge challenge for us uh, because this is a multiplayer experience and what you will experience is just a single player version that will be available uh, to buy on the internet but the main uh, experience in the museum is multiplayer so free people free users uh, are located in the same virtual area and they can you know, interact with each other and they are assembling the T-Rex together. So it has to work you know, s uh, simultaneously on three different uh, stations. And you know, it, it was a technical challenge to, to do it. And also uh, you know, having like thousands of visitors a day also uh, 
is a, is a big challenge while developing this kind of application because we need to assume that people will you know, try VR for the first time. So it needs to be really easy, but it also has to be fun. And you also have the whole variety of, uh, of, you know, of people using it. So you know, from small children to you know, even older people. So you know, it's, it's, a, it's about balancing the, the whole gameplay. Immersion is a Polish company based in Warsaw, Poland. It implements augmented and virtual reality technology in business and entertainment using all existing platforms. They create concepts and integration strategy, deliver full developed solutions and assist in implementation and service. Their biggest projects include collaborating with HBO, NASA, HTC, Samsung or the American Museum of Natural History. What else besides like games or puzzles with VR do you do? Is there other things that one can use it for? Oh, sure. Uh, like we have the whole variety of different business projects. For example, we, we're doing a lot of uh, virtual tours around uh, uh, real estate uh, you know, venues. So we're doing it for the developers, for, for sales teams who are able to show the, uh, you know, the, the real estate before it's even built. Mm -hmm. So people are able to you know, walk around and see you know, they, their future investment. Uh, also, we're doing a lot of things for the events, for pharmaceutical companies. We can show, for example, you know, really complicated processes that are happening inside human body which was like, without VR, which was uh, almost impossible. You know, we're doing a lot of games. We have projects that are connected with uh, Nordic Track, uh, the VR fitness bikes, which is also actually really cool idea of, you know, gamifying uh, fitness uh, activities. We have also developed an augmented reality application uh, for NASA and Smithsonian Institute, which is uh, now available on App Store. It is called Apollo's Moonshot AR, uh, and it's getting really high uh, ratings, so we're very happy. And, you know, like we have almost 70 projects uh, done for business, so I think we touched all the topics that are, you know, like all the markets. I'm here in this hidden pearl in Warsaw. This is the Jewish cemetery on Ulitsa Okapova. This cemetery opened in 1806, and since then it has served the Jewish community in Warsaw. But it's more than that. It's a valuable historical resource. When so much else was destroyed, during the Second World War particularly, this place survived remarkably. We'll be meeting some of the people who are restoring it, who are keeping it going. So do join me on this exciting episode of Poland Daily History.
So, Nihal, we're standing here in front of a group of tombs belonging to the, or remembering the lesser family. What can you tell us about these? The part of the cemetery uh, right now is uh, it's a, let's say, collection of tombstones of very rich families, uh, families that were very strong connected to Polish culture. For example, Alexander Lesser was a famous Polish painter, very well known. Uh, Hippolyte Wawelberg was a, uh, was a creator of first, also first Polish private technical university right. uh, and plenty other uh, institutions. Uh, Samuel Olgerbrand was a publisher of the first Polish encyclopedia. So people buried in that part of area are, very, are not only Jewish, Jews buried in Warsaw, but also creators of Polish uh, cultural life, uh, social life, and, uh, and scientific life. So here is the heart of the cemetery, the Polish heart of the cemetery. So that's very important from a patri Polish cultural point of view as, part, as well as from a Jewish point of view. And these, I think, these are examples of tombstones which have been renovated by your foundation relatively recently. Yes, we started to renovate all this, all this area. It's, it's going to take some years because there are more than 400 uh, tombstones we, are, we have on our list and we're renovating only, only 50, 60 uh, tombstones each year. But this part is most important, not only because of the importance of the persons are buried here, but also so these are masterpieces of the of the uh, 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 of the sculptures. Yeah, exactly. When you look at uh, when you look at this one, it, it's particularly notable. For example, you you almost say this is sort of like an Arabic design, which yeah, you... because it's one of the uh, really few uh, Arabic style uh, tombstones at Jewish uh, cemeteries in Europe. This one was uh, was uh, created by the Christian sculptor Andrzej Pruszyński. Because uh, we have to we have to remember that most of the, tombs, the Jewish tombstones were produced by were designed were created by by Jewish culture and uh, only few only few and especially at this cemetery and in the Wuch are created by Christian sculptures but it was it is an, another uh, proof that all uh, some parts of those uh, bo our both societies were so strong connected and uh, in, improving one uh, yeah other. so there's, there's really you know, so people were prepared to adapt and take in the cultural influences of wherever they came from to create these wonderful, these wonderful memorials, taking in whatever decoration, whatever was fashionable at the time, whatever they felt would make a, a grand impression. Yeah, but, but we still have to remember that uh, those tombstones is something, uh, those beautiful tombstones, are something unusual for Jewish culture, Jewish uh, cemeteries. At this cemetery, more than 50,000 graves are traditional, simple matzevas, and the fact they are still existing, that they weren't transformed not into, that they haven't been transformed into, you know, roads or other other things like Germans doing World War II with all, most of the matzevas in the countryside. So. It's, a, it's also a very important monument of the Jewish history uh, in, in Warsaw and in Poland. Yeah, well, indeed, and indeed, given the prominence, I think, of the Jewish population within the history of world Jewry, also it has I think, a worldwide significance, not just related to Poland and not just to, not just to Warsaw. But I was particularly struck by, by this marvellous um, tomb of Henrik Wawelberg, of course, because we were discussing earlier, the, the Jewish tradition is that, that folk are buried in the ground, and here we have a sarcophagus. sarcophagus actually raised up. Yes, it's a, uh, typical from ancient times and for Christian culture. So it's got nothing to do with the, uh, almost nothing to do with the uh, Jewish culture, except look at, look at that, there's a kind of material uh, on, the, on, the, on, the on, the, on the top of it. Top, yes. yeah. So, so it's, uh, it's only, uh, only uh, small symbol, symbolic, uh, symbolic material that's not a Christian grave. But uh, till now, Jews are buried only in the ground. So, so yes, it's, a, it's another symbol of uh, coexistence of both cultures both and cultures. Uh, influence. Yeah. Well, well, I suppose that 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 would that would be inevitable. That you would, especially if you were wealthy and you wanted to, the world to remember you when you'd gone. You would want to make a statement, and that I think, of all the ones we've seen today, certainly makes the boldest statement in terms of a memorial of the of Henrik Wawelberg and other members of his family, as we mentioned earlier. But uh, uh, creating such a large and beautiful monument, it's not a uh, Jewish style of... Uh, of well, uh, I agree, but... It's I... important for us Christians to, build, to, 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 to leave the import, uh, beautiful monument on our grass. And Jewish grass are very simple. So it's, just take a look. This, this, this person, Hippolyte Wawelberg, who was very rich, very uh, important person, created Technical University and several others, and several others uh, uh, institutions, decided to put the same single simple grab yes. because he, he his idea was to to create other uh, other monuments in his life he did like this technical university so his so uh, his great so because his he'd done so much we can go and see it it's a bit like when um, Sir Christopher Wren the architect of St Paul's mm. Cathedral in London was asked why there was no monument to him 
And he said in, in, in Latin, see monumentum requiris circumspice. <laughs> if you want a monument, mm -hmm. look around. And I suppose what, you're, what we're saying is that, the, the, that this particular Wabelberg took the same view. My technical university, the first of its kind in Poland, is my monument. Precisely. My grave or my tomb can, can, be, can be very simple. Yes, but most of the Christians think uh, uh, a little bit different, so that's why we have so many monuments yeah, in Christian and I think style. Also, and I think also it's, it's probably the type, you know, I think in the 19th century, wealthy people, whatever their religion, wherever they were from, liked to go out in a blaze of glory. Yeah, and and, and, and these, this was, I think, very much of the age, these, these sort of flamboyant, these great monuments. I suppose it's inevitable, even if you are of the Jewish faith, to be, to be partly taken in, uh, absorbed the, the sort of the times in which you lived. But very unusual is that the Jewish monuments from that time are also based on Christian, Christian, uh, Christian symbols, like this sarcophagus. Yes, yeah, so we were walking around earlier and we saw one, and, and, and it, 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 marvelous thing. And then it actually had inside, it seemed to me, the symbols of the of, of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, who, who, wrote, who wrote the gospel. This is obviously a Jewish, a Jewish too, but you could see the carving was very, very Christian in that sense, which is interesting, of this sort of cultural sort of mixture, uh, which I found quite fascinating, because I expected in a, in a Jewish cemetery not to see anything that was overtly or could be interpreted yeah, yeah. as, as Christian, but I suppose, you know, people were, were keen to absorb the... The, the culture of the time. Yeah, but and this cemetery, to truly say, this cemetery is one of the most valuable uh, parts of uh, Jewish heritage in, Europe, in Poland that still exists. That's exactly. why it was it started to be protected by by the states some years ago, and it, uh, something about 50 years ago, so it's protected by the state. But uh, two years ago, there was established a special endowment fund. This ah, endowment right. fund has been established by Polish state. It was a special uh, special bill. Uh, beyond that, it was something about 25 uh, millions of euro that was been given by the state to our foundation to to have this endowment fund. And since that moment, we can organize this restoration work in a very long-term way. So, so we, we we know that this cemetery is important. We would like to, to protect it, but we've got to know uh, know this cemetery better. We, of have, we, we have to discover all those stories, all those monuments, that, and those parts of monuments that are hidden somewhere. No, I think, somewhere uh, here. As, yeah, exactly. I think it's a vital, vital to the understanding of the history of both, obviously, Poland, but uh, the history of the Jews in Poland, and and and, and uh, in Poland and in, in, in the whole Europe, for example, the, the parents of the establisher of uh, the company Citroen are, are, are being buried here. Really? So, so such stories are. Uh, unfortunately, they sold the. Uh, the, 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 the people that established Citroen sold the company, so they cannot help us with the restoration process. Pity. But pity, but, uh, but there, are, there are plenty of such stories here. And very often people from, uh, from France, from Germany, from, uh, from Israel uh, are uh, sending us emails asking about the ancestors' graves here. So, so people that are buried here right now, their families are all over the world. And so it's, 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 it's a very, it's, very important source of information. It's a very important source of information, especially we don't have archives. We are, we, we, we are, we've got only this, what's written in the stone. So that's why we have to check it, protect it, and then send to the world the information that those tombstones still exist. Well, I did, I, it is remarkable that this is not more well known. As you were saying earlier, that, that a, a lot of people even in Warsaw, don't come here very often, and here they have on their doorstep this marvellous source of history and also these marvellous monuments to look at, even if you only like looking at beautiful things. There are plenty of beautiful things to look at, and it's a sort of an oasis of peace in the, in, in the city as well. We're, yeah. we're here, and it's quiet, we hear the birds and the yes, but each, nature. But each year, the, the scale of tour, touristic movement is uh, larger. Each year, there are more and more, especially Polish tourists coming here. The cemetery is much w more, more well known than five or ten years ago, so it's a, good. It's a good idea to, 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 to renovate it for those who, even, who haven't been here before. Of course, we are uh, inviting also foreign tourists because it's a unique place, not only in Poland, but in whole Europe. Michal, we've seen the, the, the work you're doing and the, the marvel work of your foundation. What would you say are the biggest challenges for the future when you look at what you'd like to do here in the cemetery? Uh, of course, we've got plenty of technical, technical uh, challenges especially trees each week so a few trees are falling down destroying the other grass we have to we have to remove all the death and dangerous trees it's a it's a technical uh, technical uh, goal for next next few months but uh, i'm afraid that this cemetery won't be so 
beautiful as it was before, because uh, because this jungle in the middle of the town, on the set of the city, those uh, tombstones uh, covered with the leaves, with the uh, with the special plants, it was something magnificent, something very very beautiful. And right now we are doing the things that are going to provide to uh, destruction of this beautiful view. So I'm afraid we are going to. Uh, rebuild the cemetery in a way, rebuild the cemetery in a way that's uh, absolutely different. So this cemetery has to be, will have to be discovered for, for all those people that visited 10 or 15 years ago uh, one more time, because it was the last moment, last moment to to to, to do the, such work. The, the 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 plants here are too old, they are destroying the monuments. So if we'll have to, we'll have to keep this cemetery uh, for the other generations who had to do the work we are doing. So but so, yes, so, so in a sense, the, the preservation of the monuments is good, but it it'll, might lose some of its magic as a mystical place with overgrown nature and sort of quiet and that's, unspoiled. That's for sure, but that's for sure. We are, I, I, when I first, uh, first time visited this place, I was really impressed of this, all, those, all those jungle jungle effects, but uh, we have to do it. We have to do it because uh, the uh, monuments are in a very bad condition. You can, uh, you can, you can. Well, of course, uh, yes, we've seen. You, 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 have, you have seen plenty, plenty of uh, uh, topsoils that are just falling down each, 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 each week. So, so unfortunately, we're gonna not revitalize this place. <laughs> Maybe it's not a good, good, good word, but we're gonna. We would like to have this cemetery uh, in the, as good con uh, condition as uh, the other uh, big cemeteries in Poland. Watching another fascinating episode of Poland Daily Travel. This episode you might find especially on the cutting edge. That's right, we're going to Axe Nation and we're going to throw a lot of tomahawks. Throwing hatchets about has become a very popular, uh, shall we say, sport amongst uh, certain groups of people, uh, not only in Warsaw, but apparently throughout Europe and as I understand it, on other continents as well. We've been asked kindly to try to find the target. This may require nerves of steel, and in that case, I could be in trouble. So stay tuned to the next couple of episodes from Axe Nation. You will learn everything about axe throwing that you always wanted to know but were afraid to ask. In addition, we'll take a walk around the Postempo 5 area in Warsaw which has an interesting selection of restaurants and knickknacks and food shopping and chef teaching and you name it, looks like a good place. So stay tuned to Poland Daily Travel as we take you to Postempo 5. We throw axes and we eat food. Poland Daily Travel, doing it for you and showing you Poland like nobody else. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. We are comfortably seated. Are you sitting comfortably? Yes, we are here in the nerve central of Axe Nation. That's right. And I want to ask, ask him a question. Ask him a question. Uh, Thomas, good to see that you're wearing shades, as all good men do. Welcome Hi. back to, the, to Poland uh, Daily Travel, where we, we investigate all of the best things to do <laughs> in Warsaw, in Warsaw in and in Poland, etc. <laughs> and this is one of them. You got a big crowd coming in from uh, the UK, about uh, 20 people. Yeah, yeah, but uh, it, is, it is typical for stag party. Yeah? Yeah. And we have a stag all... party. Stag party. What does that yeah. mean? They're gonna they're gonna kill deer with these axes? Uh, not like this. Yeah, it, it is some kind. Oh, of... Oh, you mean like a wedding party? <laughs> yeah, no, a pre-wedding just... party. Yeah, pre-wedding party for the guys. Yeah. You yeah, so they do. work out all their testosterone by throwing axes. Yeah, but uh, but we make more uh, we make like before party here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so so uh, stack parties start here. Mm -hmm. uh, people can drink about two beers and then they go. Only two beers. Yeah, it is. Uh, we have a limit for for people. It is two beers. That's yeah? a, uh, okay. 
hey, for, folks, for one and a half hour. You can't come here. You get two beers per one and a, per 90 minutes, right? But he can hide See? in the toilet and drink more. He could hide in the toilet. <laughs> he could hide. What if they what if they bring secret vodka? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's true. You know? can, yeah. And they're getting the vodka down their throat. Yeah, and but we are but we are we are looking. And they grab the them. axes, you know? Yeah, but we are looking all the time. Sometimes people yeah. try to grab some axes, but they it is uh, more often in Krakow, yeah, because uh, in Krakow we make more... I hear people in Krakow are crazy. Yeah, they are, they are crazy, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they are is that right? crazy. Yeah, crazier than Warsaw. Warsaw, we have people who are very... Uh, I, know, I don't think so, but... Calm uh, and... I don't think so. I don't think, think so. so. I think, uh, I don't think, so I think yeah. it depends from, from uh, part of Warsaw, yeah? And we are, we are here in part of Warsaw, where is the most company in Poland? And we are making here a lot of uh, team building parties. A lot of parties for companies. Yeah, and yeah. we are making parties. This is like Mokotów district. Of yeah, course. this is yeah. Mokotów, and this is uh, it's called Mordor. So Mordor. Mordor. That's yeah. like in uh, from uh, Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. there is a, there is the most com com company in Poland. Yeah, and people okay. are dying here. Yeah. Oh, you mean they're <laughs> suffering? Yeah. They're suffering here. Yeah, that's yeah. right. But you're an entrepreneur. You don't have to put up with this corporate. Yeah, nonsense. I don't have to. Yeah, this corporate don't. horrible. No, yeah, I don't it's, know what I'm saying. It's horrible. Yeah. Anyway, you're an. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, I'm sorry, Thomas. You think it's horrible? Um, how much does it cost for a party of 22 Britons? You know, uh, as I talked uh, before, yeah. we sell lines. So uh, if you will come in 22 people, you will take four lines or five. So it will be about 1,000. Yeah. But. Uh, and that, that part, uh, which one will be in one hour, it is with, with food and with everything, with beers. So I think it will cost more. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah because uh, we cooperate with nine restaurants uh, next to our club. Yeah, and because you, this, have, you have an area here. Yeah, we have it's full of restaurants and other things. How did this area develop? I mean, we'll take a walk and look at it later. Yeah, yeah. Oh, by I want to I want to mention the nice iced coffee, which is courtesy of Tutti Colori. To the calorie. It's yeah. a pizza place next yeah, door. Yeah, let's try. We can look. We'll, we'll go over there in a bit, yeah? But let's okay. finish talking here. Okay. And then we'll go walk around and talk about the places here. Yeah, okay. So uh, there you have uh, meet uh, a lot of kind of food because there yeah. is Russian food, there is a Georgian dumpkins, there is, a, there, there is a Egyptian food, vegan food, Japanese hot dog. Handmade macaron. Japanese hot dog? Yeah, you can try. My that friend, sounds good. Yeah, yeah, if you want, my, my friend can even uh, bring here in a few, few minutes. We'll so go see him. I we'll can go, order for you. No, let's go, we'll go and, but thank you, that's very nice. But let's go around and we'll, and we'll actually talk yeah, to some of the people. Yeah, and we can see, of course. Yeah, yeah. It's the best way. Because then the uh, audience can see, you know, the nice stuff going on. Yeah, it's the know. best way. That place yeah. is, is open a whole week from uh, Monday to Sunday and uh, from 12 till 22. Yeah. When, did, when did this area start getting going? You said you uh, had no, the first place here? Uh, yes, we opened, uh, we was here uh, first, yeah, and mm -hmm. was... Uh, How long was, ago? When? We opened these clubs two, two years ago. Two years ago? Yeah. Two years ago, okay. so in this place, yeah, and yeah. right now we have one more in Warsaw. Uh, it is outside uh, near the uh, lake. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah which, it is five kilometers from here. Which direction is it? Uh, it is uh, Ursynów. Ursynów. It is Ursynów. Ah, yeah? so that's going further out. So yeah, about five kilometers from here. Yeah, yeah. So it's Kabaty, perhaps, yeah? Uh, it's Ursynów more. Ish, yeah. ish. Okay, all right, right. <laughs> it's Ursynów. Now, Kabaty is a different part, but yeah, it's in that yeah, direction. It's different. Yeah, 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 that's right. Kabaty is right. where the big woods, the portion. Yeah, forest, yeah you can uh, check uh, that uh, our new club in internet. It is on uh, Fossa Street. Okay, uh, Fossa. Fossa, Fossa. Fossa Street. And that's yeah. a bigger club than this, or the same size? No, uh, there we have only uh, three lines. Mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, outside. There you can drink beer. Yeah. You know, it is oh, it's outside. outside. Yeah, Whoa. yeah. It is our first club. We yeah. watch, uh, with, uh, which one is outside? Yeah. So there you can throw outside. Yeah. yeah. Now, do you ever put a person up against the target, and then Sebastian, who's the Charles Bronson? <laughs> no, no, of but axe throws. Throws, you know, like a, and knocks an apple off their head or no, something. No, no, you don't uh, do that. I think it's so dangerous. Could be a little dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it can look dangerous, but uh, sometimes uh, it start. depends on how attached you are to the person, though, right? You can do. Yeah, it. I mean, if you don't like the person uh, that if you much, want, uh, if I mean, you want, you can. Uh, if you want, I can try. 
<laughs> you can do it for, with me? Yeah, yeah exactly, because you, you don't like me that much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. but, but I can try. How yeah. about if I try with you? Because I'm starting not to like you very much now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Stay with us, Poland Daily Travel at Axe Nation. I think we need to go throw some more axes. Are you ready? Yeah. Come on, let's go. go. Come on. Let's get an axe, and, yeah. uh, and we'll throw an axe again. Here we are. Uh, you can axe us anything, and uh, we will know the answer at this point. Uh, what do you think, uh, Tom? You ready for a little competition? Yeah, we yeah. can Concurrence, try, yeah. but, uh, but yeah. I'm a little bit scary. You Let's little try. Bit, you're a little bit scared? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Let's try. Here we go, here we go. Okay, off you go. Go ahead. Okay, so. Yeah. Okay. I will try by r right hand as you. Yeah? Okay, you got because you're left-handed. Yeah, you're the right hand. Already better than me. Yeah. Let's try. Jeez. Yeah, that's pretty good. Bit problem. For a, yeah, for I will take my, my axes. Take your axes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but axes. I'm left-handed, so I think it's better. Take your axes to and uh, let me. I'll have a go. Uh, watch this, folks. That hit the bullseye, but it didn't stick. So it's no cool. good. And, and a little bit less power. Too much power. Yeah, you I'm should use powerful, a little. Folks, obviously, that's, that's the problem true. here. Way too powerful. OK, hang on just a sec. Yeah, we, have, uh, we have uh, a lot of kinds of axe throwing. Yeah. Yeah, we have some all day. What do you, what do you, what is it char how much does it cost for this whole party of 22 people to come here? What do you charge them? What is it, an hour and a half or three hours? Uh, they take it for uh, two hours. So uh, with food, with beads, beer, with everything, I don't, don't know. It can be about 2,200 yeah, 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 for yeah. total, but I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah? It's not bad. It's not bad yeah, yeah. yeah, we have to look uh, yeah. how, how many they will drink beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but after they finish throwing. Yeah, after yeah. they finish. Uh, the other thing, uh, uh, rent is pretty cheap here, right? Yeah, uh, how many I pay here? What? I don't know if it is you don't have to tell me the exact amount, but it's cheap, right? It's because, cheap. Because you're in this industrial park. And you, and yeah, you, but uh, it is not so cheap. It's yeah. not so cheap. You're yeah, in, it is mostly, yeah, it is most than pay, uh, we pay Go here ahead, more than in Krakow. Left hand, left hand. You can try by this. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. Ah, you're doing it backwards. Okay. Yeah. Right, I'll try Whoa. that. Yeah, we need Jeez, some you practice. You split the axe. Maybe again. You almost split the axe. Gosh, Let, I'm useless. Still at, less power. I'm useless at this. Absolutely not making it. There we go. We can't stop like this. Yeah. Maybe I can. Maybe I can say you something about the board. Yeah. Please do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about the board. Yeah. About the board, we got yeah. four fields. Yeah. Green dots are for uh, seven point in classic regular match. Right. Blue is for one point, red is for three, and black is for five point. Yeah, and you got point. Uh, where is the most part of axe? So when yeah. you throw like this, would be five point. Uh -huh. Like this would be three. Yeah. I see. So the yeah. greater part of the blade, and that's how you score. Yeah, that's right. And we have uh, five game to, to, <laughs> to choose. It just shows. Do you get many women throwing axes? Yeah, we are. We are yeah. making a lot of party for women too. The women like to throw axes yeah. too. That's yeah. Yeah. Uh, today will yeah. be at uh, at seven. Yeah. Yeah. How many axe yeah, you can throwing ladies will there be? Six. Six. Good lord. Yeah, okay, you, you can show them how to do it. Show them how to do it, Thomas. Yeah. And okay. uh, yeah, we can uh, try. Look at this guy. He can really, uh, he's really doing the thing. He's really, really doing the thing here. Yeah. OK, so maybe you can try catch a green dot. It is for seven point. OK. Oh, I just got the bullseye, finally. I hit the dot. Yeah, you got I hit it. Yeah, but it has to be there. I know it has to stick, <laughs> but I did hit it. That's it, folks. That's it from <laughs> Axe Nation. I could do this all day. It's very, uh, very good for relieving any kind of stress you might have, even though it's hot here uh, on a beautiful day. But now it's time to go outside. Stay tuned for the next episode. We're going to walk around in this area and talk to some of the nice people who have their uh, shops, cafes, uh, restaurants here. Tom, thanks. We'll be right Thank back with more Poland Daily Travel from Axe Nation. Yeah.
next time would be better for sure in our <laughs> club. Okay. <laughs>